have managed to say to myself that production design is it. This is the line that I've decided to follow in this industry. You've got to see these things first as a picture. We have sophistication in our local culture, in our local setup. In Africa, there's a vacuum for creative designers. Part I describe as a set designer, set builder, but extraordinary. I believe that design is like a tailor-made cloth. Everybody should tailor his design to suit the particular person that we are doing it for. Working as a production designer in Nigeria, I tell you one thing, it's a mixed gray. It's like a salad. Low moments, high moments, and above all, we find out that the environment sometimes is not very encouraging. In April 2012, a significant ceremony took place in Nigeria, West Africa. Dozens of top African filmmakers, communication experts, and film enthusiasts from Africa and the diaspora, and indeed Nollywood, gathered to celebrate Africa's best in the film production industry. The AMAA, which is an acronym for Africa Movie Academy Awards, seeks to honor and recognize the best talents within the various disciplines in the film industry. At the head of this organization is Peace. Welcome to the 2012 Africa Movie Academy Awards. As a filmmaker, our objective is to retell Africa's story because the history of Africa has to be told in our own way. Welcome to AMA 2012. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to uh, introduce the nominees for the prize for achievements in production design. AMA 2012 Prize for Achievement in Production Design. How to Steal Two Million, South Africa. Where's the ganja? You are a thief. Keep on adding to an onion as a Phone swap, Nigeria. What color? Purple. Out of the question. Black suit, black heel shoes, that's all you're buying. The winner is. Phone swap. this award to you on behalf of Ama Ogapato. It's so well known in the industry. Well done. Wow. Well, um, thank you, Nigeria. Thank you, Ama. Pat Nebo, winner of the prestigious award for Best Art Director, is an accomplished veteran of the trade, having been in the business for the past 25 years. At only 16 years of age, Pat Nebo joined his brother in Italy, where he went to study architecture and fine art. He proceeded to the Arts Academy in Rome, and it is here that he discovered his real passion for design and discipline in hard work. I mean, he's a great guy that needs to be celebrated. I think we should give him a round of applause. As the audience watches the glamour and glitter of African cinema, many, like all of us, have no idea the hard work that artists like Pat Nebo put into their craft every day.
So today we find him working hard to make another show great. Somebody wants to have a product launch. He tells you, okay, my product is so and so and so. Create this stage for me. But then we go about dreaming along his lines. And after the dream, we bring this dream to reality. We build the stages. I've actually built a lot in course of my production. The same thing happens in film. No, no, everything, just shift down. I want, you see that one? Where El, uh, where El Kana is? Yeah. We want it to go, yeah. Yes. Yes, that, that, that is it, oh. The brief is this, that this actually is something that has to do with a survival reality show in Nigeria. The only one we have in this country that has been running. Just that statement was enough to set my imagination cracking. So raise it again. I want to see, please. For the last 32 hours, Pat Nebo and his team have been crafting this set at their workshop without stopping. Everyone just stealing moments to sleep somewhere behind the set and coming back to work again. This is very nice. The tension is visibly high. The stakes of a successful event are on everyone's mind and Pat must deliver on time. Pat and his team have just about 18 hours before they must be ready for the show. As we walk onto the set the following morning, there is remarkable transformation. You've seen us since yesterday, no sleeping. As much as when you saw me eating under the stage, that's it. But all the time we had to walk. Six o'clock, we had to deliver this set. And this, this set, as you can see, is quite elaborate, man. We had a crew of 25 people. Some people were on the tunnel. Some people were walking on the rock, plastering, covering, measuring distance putting up the graphics because here you can see it's a mixture of both graphics and real thing and stuff like that just to be able to craft out this village. So we are pretty busy cleaning up, knocking, hanging. And remember that this is not a cinema theater. So we have to improvise almost all the trust and all the things that will carry our sets. That's it. So we had quite a handful. This is what we actually do, or what we've been doing. That's yesterday when you saw us cutting some things and stuff like that. You remember this used to be one dormant piece of uh, ply and stuff like that, because practically when we are talking about uh, forest and co, you, you talk about dry leaves when you step on these things. So you have that feel, that local feel. The, the feel is, is, uh, is gold, arty. You understand me? This is actually where we're going to have the entrance. Of course, of course, you can see these are some of the real trees. These are the fake ones. So these are the fake ones. This, this is a real tree. So two of them standing together, you actually do not know which, which is which any longer. That's it. So it's all a combination of little film tricks and so on to create the drama. That's the most important thing. In just under two hours, the guests will begin to stream into this magnificent event. The visual enjoyment that Pat has created will be experienced by all. But none will know that it took Pat several sleepless nights for this to happen. Part of the success is when you know that every client is, is like a, a teller's client. So what you saw for Mr. A is not what you saw for Mr. B. And when Mr. A or Mr. B says thank you for what you've done for him, man, that's the best thing. This morning he said thank you and shook our hands, you know. <laughs> Pat Nebo is delighted with the client's gratitude. But Eddie Lawani, the technical manager and effectively Pat's supervisor, has to make sure everything is set for the event. 
Eddie has worked with Pat Nebo for 20 years now and has some interesting insights about Pat. Pat I describe as a set designer, set builder, stage construction man, extraordinary. For people like Pat Nebo who have come so many years from way back, he's able to cut down on some expenses that some young designers may not be able to, to do because he knows the tricks. Where the other guy is going to be important stuff, he knows how to create them locally. We have this synergy such that before I make a comment, he sees where I'm going to. So that really just works perfectly for me. The only weakness I find in my dear brother and friend part is that in the process of paying excessive attention to details, which is good, he loses out on crucial time to deliver some jobs like spec on when you need to do it. And I'll really say he's somebody that Africa should be proud of by virtue of what he has done and what he's still doing. As the final guests walk in and enjoy a sumptuous dinner, all nerves are focused on the event. And finally, it kicks off, packaged around the work of a master art director. You cannot go to the jungle because you shake. You have to go into the jungle! With barely three hours of sleep after the event, Pat must be back at the office to pay the suppliers and the people who work for him. After production, and then you have to pay the bills, people invade your office. <laughs> Nobody wants to defer the deferment of the payment. The show is over, you must pay. But the people who are home we are working for, it's not like that. But who will realize that the most important thing for people is to see a finished product that is good, which I thank God we were able to do that day because everybody commended the set. But nobody wants to know the kind of stress that went through it. And if you ask me, it's just passion that is driving us. That's it. Wow. Thank you. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, cool. For several years now, Pat Nebo has been designing, constructing, and decorating hundreds of sets for a variety of clients. The design process is conceptualized by a three-dimension graphic designer, who Pat sketches for. From the computer design, a model is created to show exactly how the set will be propped up in an actual situation. These designs are created in what Pat Nebo calls the arena. I don't call it my workshop, we call it the arena. You understand me? So we have this big space. It's high, it's slightly bigger, but here, most of the times, works go out and when they're coming, we dismantle them. So nothing is actually wasted here. I call it the arena because this is where we challenge ourselves. And the idea is that any time we are working here now is to see, to create something new. So that's it. We stop. That's, that's about the, the office. I'm married to Pauline Gozinebo. And I have three lovely boys, Carlo, Stefano, and Angelo. These are the names of my three boys. Whenever I'm at home, I am preciously there. Quality time, but for half of the time, I am not around. But I can also tell you one thing, that what the film industry does, 
or the sacrifice we had to make is to forfeit our social life. Pat Nebo has a husband. He's loving, he's very truthful, he's free, very free with me, and I'm very, very free with him. Till date, there's nothing Pat Nebo cannot tell me, and there's nothing I cannot tell him. Pat Nebo, as a father, is very loving. That's where you see him acting like a baby. He's very loving with the boys. It comes down to their level. Now, as a set designer, I see him as a workaholic. He loves the job. Pat Nebo's town is Lagos, a thriving African metropolis of a whopping 18 million people. In here, and indeed around the country, about 600 films are produced every year far more than Hollywood and Bollywood. And Pat Nebel's touch is at the heart of some of these magnificent films. Film. As a production designer, what I do is I take the script. Once I'm through with the script, I'll be able to come up with what the feel of this film will be like. If there are people in it, what these people will look like, what they will wear, what the houses wear, and we work specifically on, based on chronology. Action! Action! Go! In Nigeria here, for instance, when I work as a production designer, you got to see these things first as a picture. You got to understand the cultural implications of what you do. We have sophistication in our local culture, in our local setups, in our local home and so on. So these aspects, that is representing things the way they were, getting the pictures right, getting the costumes right, getting the feels, the kind of buildings we had that time right, that is my specialty. on uh, figuring. We had all manner of challenges for figuring. I had to give my all in figuring. When it was impossible, we made the impossible possible. <laughs> and I tell you one thing, when they called me and said that the film had picked up, I think five or so awards and had 10 nominations, I was too happy. The film industry in Nigeria is thriving, but for Pat Nebo, that is not all. While feature films have given Pat Nebo a positive reputation, it is in his work on TV that one really sees his dedication to give back to his community. Working under his wing is a new crop of Nigerian designers whom he is training as they work on real jobs, like the Star Search TV game show. Open. Oh yeah, close it, man. That's how it, close it. It's fine. What we are setting up here is uh, practically, let me put it this way, the longest game show in, uh, on Nigerian TV, which is the Star TV game show. Honestly, it's the longest running game show. We've been on, we've been doing this game for over seven years. 
Pat Nebel's team is comprised of university graduates. Pat recognized the need to give real-life experience to these young people who would otherwise not have had the chance at their respective universities, where they only learn design theory. Pat is proud to be preparing the next generation of production designers. It is actually all patentable production. These are people who are, you, you want the real raw technical, they are there, and you want it, they are, they are nice finishers. Mm -hmm. So it's part of our key technical crew. So it's an experienced team. Any of these guys can go out tomorrow and work as a production designer. In a few minutes, the show has kicked off and the presenter waxes lyrical about the brand and the competition. Soon, it's time to announce the winner and the celebration that follows. Nigeria, I wish you peace. As the rest of Nigeria celebrates a well-produced and designed show, Pat Nebo is ensuring that some Nigerian youngsters will be able to take over from him. We started the production design aspect of it, really. In NTLM, the design department was regarded as one of one carpentry department. Carpentry, in quote, with some derogations. You know, there was a limit to which you cannot, they can get. But I have been able through hard work, through teams of collaborators, people that believed in me and gave us the opportunity to raise the level of production design. Now in Nigeria here, when you want to do something, people will ask you, who is the designer? Meaning that the awareness is there. Where the position that the film industry has placed Nigeria today, Nigeria did not, couldn't have gotten there, even with all these 50 years of independence. But the film has taken Nigeria far and wide. Pat Nebo's 25 years of experience in film have given him insight into the various problems that are facing the industry. Half of the problem we have in the film industry is that we have people who fly into the film industry. Some of them enter through the back door. If there is a back door, some of them just pop up from the ground into the film industry. And he's a director. Oh no, he's a, he's, tomorrow he's a producer. Oh no, it's too much. Next tomorrow, you find him as editor. No, 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 that one is not enough. Next, he's talking somewhere as a trade unionist representing the interests of the film or even marketing the film on its own. So at the end of the day, in the midst of this confusion, what do you find? Zero. You understand? There's no specialty. We have problem with sound industry today because nobody wants to specialize in sound. It's complex and people are running away from it. Editing is part of it. There are no archives. Events that happened 20 years ago in this country cannot be found anywhere. Nobody's keeping it. Individuals don't have the capacity. Photographs of Nigerian independence have to be imported and begged from BBC. It is a shame. Do you understand me? Film is my life, regardless of the houses and the cars. Yes, I've worked hard. I deserve a house. And I'll tell you one thing, I did not take a single loan from anybody. But I also know that at my age, I have people who can boast of $50 million somewhere else. And they have not put in one quarter of the job that those in the film industry put in. I have worked too hard for my country. And the coming generation, probably, if the, if the government doesn't take care, 
will work 10 times more than us and they might not get even near where we have gotten to. Well, AMA was conceptualized to celebrate African filmmakers, celebrate them, reward them, make them get the international and local recognition they need to have for the work that they have done. And when we came along, there was a vacuum. There was nobody rewarding African cinema. And so we created the AMAs. With AMA, we started appreciating people behind the scenes. And eight years ago, so you now know who did the sound on a film. You now know who did the costume on a film. You now know who built the set on the film. And that has been really difficult. But in Africa, it's an, I mean, it's like, there's a vacuum for creative designers. I've known Uncle Pat for a long time. Uncle Pat is an excellent creative designer. I'll say that because of his tenacity and his patience. I think he has endeavored where many have failed, especially in this country. I feel that he is not appreciated. I feel that, as usual in my beautiful country, Nigeria, if Pat Neighbor was South African, he'll probably be more celebrated and paid a lot more than he's paid by us at home. And Nigerians don't know what we have in Uncle Pat. And um, I think that he has ventured where most don't. What keeps me going is having a settled home. I know the kind of pressure I face everywhere and so on. So at the end of the day, I'm just running home because I have a home. Are you getting me? At the end of the day, I'm running home. I'm running to my house. I tell you, don't underestimate what a settled home can do. Yes, when you have to come in and you have a settled home, have your children and your wife around you and stuff like that, it's enough inspiration. I've managed to say to myself that production design is it. This is the line that I've decided to follow in this industry. What I have done all this year is a set designer, art director, and production designing, which for me shows only one thing, that you need to dig in in your particular field, specialize in it. Look at me, I'm getting noticed in places like Kenya. You people came all the way from Kenya to come and do an interview on Pat Neighbor in Nigeria. It's an added feather to the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people, I think. Do you understand me? I believe that design is like a telomade cloth. No two designs for two different people can be the same. I think that is where the cutting edge should be, that everybody should tailor his design to suit the particular person that we are doing it for. This glimpse at the life of Africa's best art director reminds all of us that passion, commitment, and above all, hard work pays, well, most of the time. And with those qualities, Pat's star may just keep rising. <laughs>